Hey there, fellow entrepreneurs. Welcome back to Green on Ambition. Today, we're going to dive into the five common challenges I find that people have when it comes to using HoneyBook. Those of you new to my channel, my name is Jessie. I am a certified HoneyBook Pro as well as a business consultant. I have over 10 years of experience in the event planning industry, and I'm super passionate about helping other professionals in the industry with getting things organized and their back office system. So this video is something that I'm super excited about because I find that these issues are very common. And if you see yourself in any of them, let's start to talk. The first challenge that I find that people have when it comes to using HoneyBook is just a lack of clarity as to the processes in their system. I have several videos on here about how to use automations, which is helpful when there is clarity in the steps in which you're going to be using. One thing about computer systems is that they're extremely smart, especially this day and age. However, if you do not know what happens after the next one or you're not consistent with what happens next after the next step, it's going to be very hard to go into side of HoneyBook and start creating things. So what I find that most people will do when there's not clarity, they'll go in and start creating a ton of random emails. They'll create a ton of random templates. Um, it'll be things all over the place. I'll go inside of their account and I'm like, why do you have like 50 smart files? I don't understand. And it's just because again, there was no clarity. So if you are one of those individuals, I always recommend taking time take out a piece of paper and write out your process map. And that's just okay. When someone comes through my contact form or lead form, this is what happens. After this, do I do follow-ups? If I do do a follow-up, what type of email do I want to have happen? What are some of the things in which I can do to add value to my client? I had a client that uses HoneyBook for her doula services. One of her emails and her follow-ups were, what are some things to look for when you're choosing a doula for your birthing experience? I thought that that was a beautiful email and a beautiful added touch because it's a relationship. It's not something you just automatically make a decision on. So depending on the type of business that you have, think to yourself, what are some things that can help separate you from the masses? And think about what is your brand and the person in which you're wanting to work with. So once you have the clarity on your steps and processes, this is when it makes it a ton easier for you to go about using HoneyBook. And if you're not quite sure about how to do that, I do offer HoneyBook audits as well as I do do setups for people. So depending on where you are in your business, I'm here to help you. The second challenge that people face is just being overwhelmed with tech in general. This is not just only for new entrepreneurs. I find that this is very common, even for people that have had businesses for, for some time. A lot of the new tech that's been coming out has really only been out in the last decade. So if you've been using just pen and paper and you've been doing your business for 10 to 15 years, it's definitely time to look at what are some things that are out there that are going to help you with being able to run your business more efficiently, especially this day and age where, of course, labor costs are what they are. Um, so if you are ever looking to have someone work with you, understand that I it's going to always be better to have something that's organized for someone to follow compared to having a ton of paper all over the place where mistakes can happen because no one's perfect because I know I make mistakes. So that's why I don't rely on me doing everything manually, but you just don't want to find yourself letting go of someone that really could have been a great asset to your company, but because you're not embracing the technology that's out there that you let them go. So if you do find yourself being overwhelmed with tech, I think that it's important for yourself to take advantage of some of the free resources. HoneyBook does have a community of people, um, a free community that they just launched in 2024. Uh, I know I even host workshops as well. So it's really going to help you to take bite-sized pieces so that you can move forward. Even when I have set up accounts for people, I tell them, embrace it. Don't go back to the old way. Lean into it. Figure out how to be able to feel more confident in it. And it gets better with time. So don't think that it's always going to be so cumbersome or so chunky for you, especially if this is not necessarily your strong suit. There are plenty of people that feel that way. So don't feel like you're alone. The third challenge is really feeling as if if you embrace automation, that is going to remove your client interaction. 
that is not necessarily true. I feel that it truly improves it, if we want to be honest, because when we're doing everything manually, we're just doing our best. Um, I remember when I was doing a lot of things manually inside of my business, I would feel anxious when I wasn't working because I was worried that something wasn't happening or something was falling through the cracks, or I was worried that if I didn't have my phone by me all the time, what if I get a new lead in? I'm going to miss it. Like That is the worst feeling ever. <laughs> So when you do use technology, if you use a platform like HoneyBook, don't think that automations mean that you don't ever talk to your client or you want to impact your client relationship. In reality, it does improve it when it's done correctly. I've had it. I've had clients in the past that have told me that because of the automation that I set up for them, that inside of holiday season where they were busy cooking and doing all the things inside of their business, Every new lead was getting touched and they did not have to be stressed out of breaking down, doing what they were doing to just respond to someone because we had set up automations that were able to automatically email someone a specific document when the client did something inside of HoneyBook. So automations do not mean that you are going to lose that personal touch with your client. It is not the case. Um, and if you build out your your pipeline correctly and your automations correctly, you'll find that you will wow your clients even better than what you probably are doing right now. So don't feel as if that this will impact your service. The fourth challenge that people face is just really not being open to change. I think that that can be one of the biggest hurdles because if you're not the type of person that is open to change and then you have tech issues and then you're not clear about your process, I mean, I feel like that's just adding kindling onto the big fire that's about to occur. Um, change does occur and change is not bad, especially if you're the founder, CEO, owner of your company. Change occurs when you change and when you grow and when you learn how to be a better leader and when you learn how to improve your services. Change does not have to be that you're losing your brand identity. I think the right type of change will do nothing more, do nothing but improve it and really help your audience know more about who you are and then solidify what your brand stands for. I currently am working with a client that is using HoneyBook to manage their custom bridal gown services. Right now, a lot of their processes were very manual, which would cause breakdowns inside of their production. When I was able to write out their process map for their for their client experience and then also their services, she like before it was even set up, she felt at peace knowing like, oh my gosh, things are just going to be so much better in my company. And it's only because automation when done correctly will help lessen your load. So as you can focus on the things that you really want to focus on in your business, I know that I don't want to always have to watch and manage each and every email that comes inside of my company. I knew that when I started my event business that I wanted it to be a national brand. Heck, this year I'm focusing on learning how to make it into a franchise. If I needed to manage every little nuance of my business and I didn't want to learn how to become better um, because I wasn't embracing change, my vision and my goal would not be a possibility. So if you are someone that struggles with change, one of the things that I would recommend is probably keeping track of what your actual goal is. Because when I am clear about what I'm building, I can really get laser focused on the steps that I'm taking, knowing that it's going to get me one step closer to what I say that I really want to have. And here's the thing about goals. You set them. You had this vision. You say that you wanted to build this business for whatever reason you wanted to build it. But don't get in the way of what you say that you really want. So embrace change so that you can learn how to navigate using a platform like HoneyBook so that you're able to see your dreams come true. And the fifth reason that people find themselves challenged with using HoneyBook is just because you're only using a small portion of it. And that often is only occurring because you only understand a small portion of HoneyBook. I've had it where some people will come to me and they were only using HoneyBook for contracts. So they're only using HoneyBook 
for doing their invoicing. And then when I am showing them, like you can use your scheduler, so you no longer need to use Calendly, or you can get paid inside of HoneyBook, so then you no longer need to send PayPal invoices, or you can use your lead forms, so you don't need to use your Google form, or you can use the integration with QuickBooks, or you can just use the bookkeeping features that are inside of HoneyBook to just help you with running your business. I find that when someone has very limited understanding about the platform, it does um, hinder your, it will hinder how much you take on inside of it. One of the things that I am focusing on this year is really being able to help with bridging the gap between why I love HoneyBook or platforms like it and what are some of the challenges in which you're facing currently in your business. Recently, I did a series of webinars to help entrepreneurs with being able to use HoneyBook. I was super surprised to find that my one workshop where I was talking about how to build out a six-figure client flow had the least amount of signups. However, the class that I'm talking about how to create packages that will help you scale has the most amount of registrations. And that tells me that we don't always understand how these specific parts play a big part to our goals. So one of the things I'm really focused on this year is making sure that um, I'm able to put out content that's going to make it helpful for you or webinars, because I know that I love doing webinars more than doing videos sometimes, um, because then that way I can answer questions and be able to give you more specific um, answers. Because again, I know everyone that watches my channel are in different parts of their business. And it's hard to give this umbrella because one event planner does their business different than another. And then if you do balloons compared to um, makeup, it's all going to be different. And HoneyBook is a great platform for any service-based business that is really, truly looking to grow. Because in the previous years, all we really had was payment processing platforms like the PayPals of the world. And then we had to send DocuSigns to get our um, contracts signed. Um, and this day and age, there is a solution that's out there. And that's why I always like to share about HoneyBook. If you've watched this video and you're not currently using HoneyBook, I do have a link that's in the description that will allow for you to get free seven day trial to be able to try out the platform to see if it's a good fit for you. Um, and I would like to hear from you, like what has been your biggest challenge within using the platform so that you can inspire me on what other videos I should be able to create for you. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you later.